Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we are going to be handing out our five best bets against the spread in the NFL this weekend. We've done pretty well for ourselves, all things considered, through three weeks of winning records in each week, but now we get into week four where injuries are starting to pile up. We have some key divisional matchups as well, so things are starting to get interesting. And we're going to be starting off here with my number one bet of the weekend. We're riding with the team that's done very well for us up to this point, and that is the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are on the road against the Indianapolis Colts. And they are favored by one and a half. I think that this is a situation where their defense is going to just continue to help lead them to wins over inexperienced quarterbacks. Where last week as well, or I'd say last week, it was more so about the fact that Justin Herbert was injured. So a compromised quarterback at that. The week before, you're talking about Bo Nix. And on top of all of that as well, you know, you've now come into a matchup against Anthony Richardson, who leads the leads the NFL in interceptions thrown right now, is very erratic. Obviously, he has that very high potential, but in terms of a consistent basis, we haven't really seen it from him yet. And I don't think that this is going to be the game against the Pittsburgh Steelers that we really see it come all together. On top of that as well, We have talked at length earlier this week about the progression of Justin Fields in this Steelers offense. The fact that they sort of took the training wheels off of him a little bit within this past week, let him through throw over the middle of the field a little bit more 11 times which is a huge step from zero times in week one and six times in week two. So he's getting more acclimated to what Pittsburgh needs from him. You're going against a Colts team that A, I just don't think is going to be able to have very much success at all against what is an elite Pittsburgh defense. And then additionally, I think the run game could definitely be prominent, and that might also include Justin Fields, who's really yet to fully let loose on the ground. We saw him running a good amount against Atlanta, but I feel like we could start to see some more designed runs from Justin Fields in these next few weeks. I really like the Steelers once again. They've done very well for us up to this point in the year. And betting against the Colts has also been... um, Actually, I can't even say that. We bet on the Colts game week one and they hit for us. So I'll respect the Colts, but I just don't think that they're ready necessarily to match up with this elite defense on the other end in Pittsburgh. The Seattle Seahawks on the road against the Detroit Lions. This is a tough game, Monday night football, so projecting out as well. Don't love that necessarily, but I am still a believer in who the Lions can be. Now, losing their center and Frank Ragnow is a very tough loss for them. Facing a Seahawks team that's undefeated at this point at home, but... I think that this is a situation where the Lions are going to start rearing their heads. And I said that last week against the Cardinals. We didn't necessarily see it. The Lions covered for us last week, but made it a lot more difficult than it had to be. So this week, I do think that this is a situation where... Seahawks losses are going to, or shortcomings more so, are going to be exposed a little bit more. I'm expecting Aiden Hutchinson to continue to have his name in the Defensive Player of the Year award race where I just think that that Seattle offensive line is a real issue. They are still without Kenneth Murray. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be Zach Charbonnet in the backfield. The Seahawks team, I just don't know how battle-tested they really have been up to this point. Where you look at, they go to overtime against the Patriots team that's pretty bad. Last week, they were able to benefit from playing Skylar Thompson and Tim Boyle at quarterback. That, you know, this upcoming week, I think the pressure is going to be a lot more ramped up. I think that they can still be competitive in the game, but I do feel like Detroit's going to be able to close this one out and... You know, eyes are definitely on Jared Goff right now, who has not pl- played all that well up to this point in the season. That's a good defense for Seattle. It sounds like their rookie, Byron Murphy, might end up missing this game as well, which could be another big loss for the Seahawks. But I'm rolling with the Lions in this one on Monday Night Football. The Bengals 
finally pick up a win in my in my opinion against the Carolina Panthers. They are four and a half point favorites now. I know Andy Dalton revenge game is maybe a little bit scary for some, but. The reality of the situation is I do feel like the Bengals are just a significantly better team and Carolina for as much as a fun story and I am rooting for them to stay competitive. I like head coach Dave Canales a lot. I'm all for Andy Dalton setting the world on fire once again, but I think that Cincinnati is ultimately going to be, you know, pretty comfortable against Andy Dalton. I think that Joe Burrow is going to be able to put up points against the Panthers, where I have no faith in that Carolina defense. And on the other side, I mean, Andy Dalton can still have a good game. I think that this one is going to be a foot race, though, and I think the Bengals are going to come out on top. They are a far more talented offense now again liked a lot what I saw from the Panthers last week against the Raiders but I don't think the Raiders are all that good of a team this is a game that the Bengals quite literally have to have if they have any shot at making the postseason I think that this is you know a small enough deficit that I'm willing to eat the points on the road I think that both offenses are going to show up but I think the Bengals who didn't turn the ball over last week didn't punt the ball. I think that this time around, they are going to be able to, you know, win a game like that where their offense is just about flawless, but this time their defense can actually provide something for them. So I have them minus four and a half against the Panthers. This is a tricky game here, and this is where we're sort of coming to the end of this week's slate and grasping at straws a little bit more. I do have the Cardinals covering minus three and a half against the Commanders. Now, it's a tough situation because I'm really rooting for Jaden Daniels. I think he's going to be ultra talented and that he's going to have a great career ahead of him. But Zach Gannon is an excellent defensive minded coach. Do they have the personnel to be excellent on that side of the ball? Not necessarily just yet, but. I think for a defense that has shown an ability to provide a lot of misdirection and such on the defensive side of the ball pre-snap, I think they can coax the Commanders and Jaden Daniels into making some mistakes. Last week, they were as close to flawless as you could get offensively. I don't think that that's going to be the case once again this week. The Cardinals sort of got away from what is, I think, the strength of their offense, which is running the ball. Not to mention that you do have sort of the game breakers on the outside, specifically looking at Marvin Harrison Jr. Not quite sure what the status update on Trey McBride is yet. He was in concussion protocol. He's questionable for the game. So that could be a loss for them, but either way, this is a Washington defense that is a little bit of a sieve. And it's not like Arizona is excellent on the other side, but I think that, again, the strategy of Arizona's defense is going to sort of get Washington to make mistakes that will give them enough of a breathing room. And once and if Arizona can jump out to an early lead, I think that they should pretty easily be able to close out this game in the run game and having Kyler Murray make the occasional special play. So I have the Cardinals minus three and a half at home on their little two game homestand here. And then this is a little bit of a trigger warning here for people because this last bet is a little bit of a gross one, but I do have the Kansas City Chiefs minus seven against the Los Angeles Chargers. And I really hate laying this many points. And it is, you know, you can call it cowardly a little bit. I like won't agree with you. This is a, where the Chargers are going to be in such a tough position, considering the fact that they are, in my opinion, and again, this is a little bit of speculation at this point. I think they're going to be without Justin Herbert. I think that they are going to be without both of their offensive tackles, their best player on defense in Derwin James. And ultimately, I think that the Chiefs have to, they don't have to necessarily, they're 3-0, they don't have to do anything. But I think that they're going to come out and sort of, you know, reestablish themselves as truly the best team in the NFL this week. And 
they're going to be able to just sort of have their way with the Chargers on both sides of the ball, you know, ideally. I think that, you know, with Joey Bosa questionable, with Derwin James suspended, there aren't too many playmakers on that defensive side of the ball for the Chargers. Not that they're a bad group by any means, but I think that the Chiefs are going to be able to, you know, have a fair amount of success there. Listen, Chargers, reality of the situation, I don't think that their home field advantage really means all that much anyways because it is one of the worst home field advantages there is in the NFL. Chiefs travel well. I think that this is, again, I know a little bit gross taking this many points, but I think that the Chiefs come in to L.A. and sort of run all over the place. And, again, seven's a tough one, but talking about our, our fifth pick here, usually you have to reach a little bit, and that's where we're going here. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. And we are going to be taking our final break of the show when we come back on the other side. Going to be switching gears a little bit to the NBA where I do want to discuss yesterday's media day from the Denver Nuggets. The 2023 champions have a little bit of vengeance on their mind after last year. Going to be touching on some of the comments made from head coach Michael Malone, general manager Calvin Booth, and some of the other storylines that came from media day yesterday. So we're going to be diving into that. But first, a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. 